Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB AI Tester Certification. We are in chapter 9 talking about methods and techniques for testing AI based systems. And we will be getting ahead with our next segment today which is 9.2 pairwise testing. And side by side we are also covering 9.3 back to back testing. Well, to get started, of course, uh, the very first technique we have is pairwise testing. Uh, just for your kind of information, these techniques are not applicable at this point of time because AI tester certification does not talk about how to apply them and solve them. But just for your kind of information, the this particular technique has been covered uh, in test analyst certification. So if in case you are curious, you can go to my test analyst playlist and go to the pairwise testing technique and understand more about it. Now. Here, all they are trying to talk about a theoretical concept of how exactly pairwise testing can be used for AI testers. And uh, let's see how exactly this is. So the number of parameters of interest of, for an AI-based system can be extremely high, especially when the system uses big data or interacts with the outside world, such as self-driving car. Exhaustive testing would require all possible combination of these parameters set to all possible values to be tested. However, since this would, this would result in practically infinite number of tests, test techniques are used to select a subset that can be run in a limited time available. Now, whole point here is, of course, if you have remember from your foundation level certification, we did cover test techniques there, and the objective of these techniques was to overcome the principle number two, that is exhaustive testing is impractical. Because exhaustive testing is impractical or impossible, is clearly says that you cannot just try everything what comes into the real combination of in inputs and outputs or different combination of different inputs to a particular system. And that's something which is indefinite to be even determined. So to be frank, you don't have enough time to do that practically, right? Even if you think of coming up with n number of combinations, the project doesn't give you that much time that you can go ahead and exercise it practically. So the conflict here was that one way you're saying exhaustive testing is impossible and another side you're saying that you need to gain confidence about the quality of the product, right? Both of them are contradicting with each other. And that's where we introduce you to the test techniques in the foundation level, stating that these techniques will be saving your time by creating limited number of test cases without compromising on the coverage and the required confidence what you really need. So one among them is pairwise testing, what we are talking about. And yes, that certainly can help you to reduce your number of combinations to the point and bring back that confidence and coverage what you really need instead of trying indefinite number of combinations. So, where it is possible to combine numerous parameters, each of which may have many discrete values, combinatorial technique or testing can be applied to significantly reduce the number of test cases required, ideally without compromising the defect detection capability of the test suite. There are several combinatorial techniques. However, in practice, pairwise testing is the most widely used technique because it is easy to understand as ample tool support. Has ample tool support, of course, for sure. In addition, research has also shown that most defects are caused by interactions involving few parameters. And these parameters can be certainly taken care of by the pairwise testing. So put together, pairwise testing is really helpful in AI-based systems as well seen as one of the specialist technique to help you come up with the possible number of test cases, but yet important to find the defects. Another technique specific to AI-based system is something called as back-to-back -back testing. Quite often you don't hear this word because this comes particularly for AI-based testing or AI-based systems. So let's understand about what exactly back-to-back -back testing is. So one of the potential solution to the test oracle problem, which we covered in our previous chapter, when testing AI-based system is to use back-to-back -back testing. This is also known as differential testing. With back-to-back -back testing, an alternative version of the system is used as a pseudo-oracle and its outputs compared with the test results produced by the SUT. The pseudo-oracle could be an existing system or it could be developed by a different team. 
possibly on a different platform with a different architecture and with a different programming language. When testing the functional suitability, which is as opposed to the non-functional requirements, the system used as a pseudo oracle is not constrained to achieve the same non-functional acceptance criteria as the software in the test. For example, it may not have to execute as quickly in which case it can be far less expensive to build. In the context of ML, it is possible to use different frameworks, algorithms, and model settings to create an ML pseudo oracle. In some situations, it also it may also be possible to create a pseudo oracle using conventional non-AI software. So in a summarized way, Back-to-back -back testing is more of like comparing it with one of these standalone systems, which necessarily not to be up to that extreme uh, performance or non-functional characteristics being met, but uh, it's just like keeping a system which is kind of like a comparison model and trying to see how different does this model, you know, a new AIB system reflects uh, according to the old one. So not exactly the old one. What we are trying to say here is that it's just that, for example, if I have to see if this person is really best, all I have to do is keep a person against him, right? And this person is not necessarily supposed to be a master of everything so that my system looks weak and nothing in front of him. Something like which is compatible at the same time, right? At the same level. But yeah, it's not necessary that this person should be smart enough, should be the best in class and sort of thing. You can even have someone equivalent to that particular level and just say that, whether this system and that system is kind of like helpful. So I can use the outputs of those oracles to be used as a reference for testing my system. So the comparison is not about like, am I trying to make my SUT or system under test exactly the same as the comparison model? Not at all. We're just trying to see is the differences are same, if the, some activities which the system is trying to perform is exactly the same here or not, or how much is the difference and sort of thing. So we get a reference model altogether. So we are not using it as a comparison or kind of as a best practice, but just for a comparison to judge whether how better and how specific our SUT system under test is, because uh, without any kind of references, things might certainly look quite, you know, without any aim and goal. So all we need is just a kind of like a parallel side by side system, which gives me an understanding of how better my system is comparatively, right? So for pseudo codes, you have different ways to create it, right? You can just create simple, you know, other models, which uh, could cater the similar kind of purposes, but not to that extreme level of non-functional characteristics, but it certainly just gives me the functional parameters of it. So for pseudo oracles to be effective in detecting defects, there should be no common software in both the pseudo oracle and the SUT. Otherwise, it would be possible for the same defect in both to cause the two test results to match when both are defective. <laughs> That's a very common thing, of course. If you have two different systems and both have the same problem, then you would think that, yeah, this is one of the features because there also it is not working and here also it is not working. So let's not look forward to have those things which can create a false negative, right? So that is where it will kind of like will not be helpful at all. So with uh, so much of immature, reusable, open source AI software being used to develop AI-based system, reuse of code between the pseudo oracle and the SUT can compromise the pseudo oracle itself. So poor documentation of reusable AI solutions may also make it difficult for the tester to recognize that this problem is occurring. So two important points to remember here. One is that we're talking about using several open source code to build this AI-based system. So we need to make sure that these are kind of like stabilized and uh, there is no compromise on the pseudo oracle altogether. And on the other hand, if we talk about the documentation, it's very, very crucial for testing the systems. Otherwise, we will never get to know what problems are occurring. So documentation is important. And at the same time, the pseudocode prepared is equally important. So we just covered two important techniques for AI-based systems. And uh, we'll be talking about more in our next tutorial. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.